What's going on guys? This is Brent031 and I got a special treat for y'all. Uh, my good buddy Bruce came over. We're going to do a little filming with some gray man stuff um, that he's getting his channel started and I want to help contribute to, the, to that. Um, but what he else also brought over, which pretty, pretty much just caught me off guard, was not one, but two badass 50 caliber sniper rifles. So I am super excited to shoot these things because these things are just awesome. Um, I've only shot a Barrett M82A1 once in my lifetime, uh, doing some cross training with some scout snipers one time at Camp Pendleton, and we let them shoot our M240s, and uh, he got to shoot. In exchange for that, they let us shoot their Barrett, which at the time I was just completely blown away how little recoil the M82A1 had, uh, mainly because of the break, and it has a big-ass buffer spring in the stock. So I was just talking to Bruce about it. I was asking him because, you know, I don't see the big, you know, buffer spring or anything like that. Anything to absorb recoil on these, I asked him how much, you know, how how much felt recoil there was with these 50 caliber sniper rifles, and he said there's hardly any. So, pretty interested to see how that works. He says it's mainly due to the break. But in any event, I'm gonna quit running, bumping my gums here. I'm gonna <laughs> turn it over to Bruce because he knows more about this stuff than I do. So, Bruce, what you got for us, man? Well, real briefly, uh, Brent's absolutely right. These things really don't have much recoil. It may be that you expect for them to have a lot of recoil because it is a 770 grain round that it's pushing uh, through the air, but they're so heavy, they weigh about 35 pounds, pounds a piece. These are both single shot rifles built by Armalite. This is an AR-50 and this is an AR-50A1. Uh, the differences between the two are minimal, but uh, they both weigh about 35 pounds. And with these massive brakes that we've got on the end, the brakes really do the work for the gun and cut down on the recoil. And I was uh, telling Brand, I think these things recoil no more than what a 308 would recoil, a uh, 308 bolt gun. They're really not that bad. Uh, they are, however, extremely loud, and they will blow gas out the side of those ports and clear anything to the left or right of them. They look very intimidating when they fire. They stir up a ton of dust. But uh, it's more bark than bite. They really just don't recoil that much. Uh, this one uh, is my brother's. It's uh, an AR-50A1, and my brother's a left-handed shooter. So this is a left-handed rifle. So one of the things we started looking at was uh, this being a left-handed gun was, was how could a right-handed shooter use it? And what we developed was we came up with a couple of simple modifications that makes it an absolute pleasure for a right-handed shooter to use. Um, as a right-handed shooter behind the gun, you can feed it with your left hand, your non-shooting hand. You can work the bolt with your left hand, your non-shooting hand. And all we did to accomplish that was we took this cheek rest and we made another piece of cheek rest out of kydex material they just dropped this down a little bit so now we can get a comfortable uh, cheek weld here with our eyes aligned on the optic and work the bolt even with our face here against the cheek rest uh, works great for a right-handed shooter um, and, and just in case you know that's not enough well we bought a right-handed gun too we'll put rounds through both of them and uh, let Brent make an opinion as to whether he likes this setup or not on the left-handed gun. These guns are pretty simple. They are extremely simple. Um, they've got a, a big uh, lock and lug um, on the bolt face. Uh, picture that sort of like how an AR bolt locks inside of uh, the receiver extension. It has uh, three massive lugs on the end of the bolt and those just lock in to the receiver extension. It's got a giant safety on the rear and this safety is just a big paddle. Uh, sort of like that on a, on, a mile, on a Mauser or something like that. You flip it up for safe and down for fire. Um, on this one we put an SWFA uh, Super Sniper Scope. This is a fixed 10 with um, MRAD reticle. Uh, this is just a test optic uh, for us to test the, uh, the rifle and uh, stretch its legs out a little bit before we put an expensive optic on there. Uh, it will be getting another optic in the future, but this optic has performed well for what we needed to do and it is 50 caliber rated. It sits inside of an aluminum chassis. Uh, we've got a bipod on this one from Tango Down that's been working really, really well. Um, adjustable uh, butt pad. The stock length is adjustable. The cheek rest is adjustable. So you can set this up to fit the shooter. It uses a standard AR-15 pistol grip. So you can swap those out with whatever flavor 
uh, pistol grip you like. The trigger on these is pretty good. Um, it, you know, for it being a 50 caliber, um, it's actually it can be made to be a very good trigger. But they're pretty good, pretty good out of the box. Uh, very accurate rifles, easily capable of engaging human-sized targets at a thousand yards, uh, and well beyond what the shooter that's experienced and, and can read wind and the other variables that go into long-range shooting. But this is the AR-50A1, and uh, like I said, the other one is the AR-50, the earlier version of the A1. It's just got some manufacturing differences in it. All in all, they are the same rifle. Nothing that uh, different to really point out between the 50, the AR-50 and the AR-50A1. But we'll put rounds through both of them, and uh, we'll let Brent give uh, a review as to what his opinions are of this single-shot, bolt-action, 50 caliber rifle. All right, guys, so uh, let's get ready to put some rounds down range. And uh, I just want to do a quick shout out real quick. Um, John at UW Gear, he made this pouch custom made for Bruce to hold his uh, 50 caliber rounds. So pretty cool. Um, John always makes good, good quality stuff. You guys, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've seen a couple videos that I've done about some of the chest rigs and stuff that he's, uh, he's put out that I have. And, uh, you know, Bruce told me that he made this custom made pouch for him. I thought that was pretty awesome. So. Um, I just want to give a little shout out to, to John over at UW Gear, and uh, Bruce is starting up a YouTube channel, so I highly encourage you guys to go over to his channel and check it out, and uh, he's going to have a full-blown review uh, video on this particular pouch. So head over to his channel after this. I've got his, uh, his channel's link below in the information box, and uh, watch his review on this pouch. So thanks for watching, guys. Let's, uh, let's start putting some rounds down range. How's the recoil? Honest opinion. It's more the the concussion. Yeah, if you could ignore that though, how yeah. does your shoulder feel? Recoil is not bad at all. Yeah. It's, the, it's the concussion. Yeah, it's the break. <laughs> that's something else man <laughs> alright guys so here's the uh, impact so it's in a little bit low into the right I was aiming center mass but yeah look, look at those things it looks like 12 gauge slugs <laughs> it's freaking ridiculous awesome awesome stuff
Yeah.